Hey guys, it's me, Ken. Yeah, it's hot out today. Um, it's one of them California July days where it's just miserable hot, plus it's hot in the shed. Um, I guess glue will dry. I'm gluing up a couple guitars, and we're going to talk about what I'm going to be doing here, but I am at a loss on what to do with this. I mean, it is so hot, my beard is reacting to it. I'm gonna have to get Paul Mitchell or something to make me some kind of beard product or something because, yeah, I got an image to keep up, but uh, I don't need to be one of them man bun dudes down in LA or, or uh, you know, I have a shirt that looks like my grandma's tablecloth, but come on, I'm, they're starting to complain about a little bit about this at work. Anyway, back to reality. I wanna get some housekeeping out of the way first. You know you're gonna like this episode, so give me a like below and uh, subscribe if you haven't. That way you'll get noticed. My videos usually come out on Saturday mornings when you're laying in bed. That way uh, you can just lay there and watch my video and then get motivated by the likes of me. I wanna give a shout out to my friend, Matt Baker. Do you know what that says? You ever be driving down the freeway and you're like, uh, and then three years later it says Aviator One? Hey, thanks, Matt. But let's talk a little bit about driving down the freeway because this is where the idea for this episode came up with. That's where the idea for this episode, blah, 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 Rented Lifts, came from. You hear that? That's Allman Brothers, Rambling Man. So I hear this on the freeway one day, and I'm driving in, and there's a part on there about, I was born in the back seat of a Greyhound bus rolling down Highway 41. Look at that, isn't that a coincidence? Thank you, Michael Breedlove. Anyway, so I'm kind of listening to this going, man, this song could be about me given my sordid history. And then, uh, Greyhound bus. Rolling down Highway 41. There it is. No, it's not Groundhog Day. I did that twice. Anyway, so I'm tooling down to 170 in LA, and um, I look over, and there's a Greyhound bus going by. Well, it goes by most days because I leave for work about the same time, and buses are on schedule. Believe that or not. So it hit me. I wonder if in my collection of Mississippi, careful, I don't have that many. I thought, do I have a blue bus plate? Oh yeah, there's a school bus blue plate, and uh, oh yeah, what do you know? There is a blue plate, well I've already cut the pickup in it, so, oh sorry about that wrong finger. So, yeah, this is it, so I figured I'm going to do a Greyhound bus themed guitar. So. We're actually going to do two. I'm going to do one out of a license plate and one out of a body kit, uh, the Comet body that I got from Michael Breedlove. And I am going to do some setup here because there's going to be a lot of color and theme and that kind of stuff. And if you don't do this right, I'm going to end up painting myself into a corner, literally. So let's get to the bench. Ramblin' Man, Almond Brothers. I'm going to give you a link to the video up there so you know what I'm talking about. Because if you haven't heard this, I think you're probably born yesterday. Anyway, let's get to the bench. Almost forgot. Do not covet these. I know what you're doing. I got other ones too, but this is just the Mississippi stuff. But do not covet my stuff. All right, here we are at the bench. First off, here's that Comet body. And it's a laminate body. It's cut out. Um, and you got to glue some stuff up here. And it's got a bottom piece that's... Uh, marked already with the holes for the screws to put everything together and a top piece where the neck goes and uh, there's going to be let me grab a couple things here there's going to be some work to do so I'm going to do my own episode here on this because you got to lay out you know where the bridge is going to be and where the neck is and and how the fingerboard comes up here and then uh, I'm not going to have the tail piece coming out like I usually do and so the neck is going to end inside the body at an angle so I think I'm going to do an episode on this one but again I'm going to make this a Greyhound themed guitar um, we'll get into some details of what that looks like but right now we're going to use this for support I've got for this license plate uh, guitar which again we're going to use this blue Mississippi 
bus, public service commission, 72 license plate. That's about the year that song Ramblin' Man came out. I got a, a couple more bus plates, but um, um, I think this blue one is going to go good with the theme. Anyway, um, I have this Sawyer kit body glued up and ready to take the clamps off of. So this is what we're going to start with. My neighbor put together like a 1958 Chevy truck, put a different motor in it. This is a time of night they're out there revving it, so I don't know if they're going to get plates or they don't trust to go down the road. But I got Super Bowl of motocross. Now I got truck repair going on in the background. Um, the donkey's been quiet lately, so I guess we're doing okay today. But let's get down to what I'm going to do here. Um, first off, y'all remember this. Um, this is the... Mr. Airplane Man guitar. You've seen Margaret play this. Um, and it's different colors. Now, you see this neck here is uh, black and it's got a gray fingerboard. I'm going to give you a, a, um, a link up there to Margaret telling uh, Tammy's story uh, right up there in the corner right about now. But the point here is every once in a while I will make a guitar that's got a painted neck to match things. Now, you'll notice that the paint line here is nice and straight, and um, the reason for that is because this was done before this was glued together. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about paint and theme and how to make all this work. So the first thing I started doing was, after I figured out my, my plate is gonna be blue and it's like greyhoundy blue, I figured, well, I better get some um, Greyhound matchbooks for the neck. So I got Lay's Cafe and Greyhound Bus Depot. I got some old Greyhound. These are from the 30s and 40s, and this is a little bit newer where they had that scenic liner or whatever where you could sit up on top and look out the glass. And a lot of different places, cafes and stuff, and had a, a Greyhound stuff. So I got a bunch of these stocked up. Next thing I did was I got some tickets, some actual tickets, and some baggage um, labels. And of course, I got my Highway 41 uh, badge. Thank you, Michael Breedlove, for making those up for me. But I found this one, and look at the colors. Uh, those are the Greyhound colors. So if I'm going to do the box and stuff in Greyhound colors, I went and matched up. And if you're interested in making one of these, the blue that you need is satin ink blue rust-oleum satin ink blue works good and then the gray i found is rust-oleum again satin stone gray those match up nice um i'm gonna put a little antiquing glaze over this stuff here and it'll match that perfectly but this will actually blow up i think to be the back graphic of the box i think i'll do that instead of a map and then when it comes to the headstock I think I'm going to blow this up here. This is a luggage tag or something, and it tells you I can put that there. And I got a couple more surprises. You know I always put something when your hand slides down and the slide gets to the 12th fret. There's always something there, and I got a surprise I ordered there. But anyway, so the moral of the story is the main theme is these collars. They're going to play heavily into it. So I'm going to set this stuff over here in the coveters area where you can look at it the whole episode. But I am going to take this and I'm going to paint this box. Now I glued this up so there's a lot of uh, sand to do to get this right. But once this is done, I am going to uh, coat it with this. And then we are going to use gray chalk paint. And I've got some um, glazing jelly or something like that that makes it all look old. So I did an episode called New Box Old that shows you exactly how to do this. And I'll burn up one of my iCards giving you a link to that anyway. So that'll start there. We'll end up with a box pretty much the same colors. But it's going to look tore up from the floor up. And that's how we'll do the box. Okay, there's a lot going on here. Um, because the neck is going to be laminated of different thicknesses and 
uh, there's a heel board, there's a spacer board that gives it more height, and then there's the neck itself, and there's all kinds of things to line up. So you remember, I've got a lot of templates for things like three-string spacing, where the middle is, where my uh, uh, grounding tension pins go. Um, I've got four-string template. This one is the one that tells me how deep my, look at that, it tells me how deep I got to route out this for the license plate box for one of these Sawyer kits. Um, this tells me where I'm going to put this at the end. See, I've got the end of the box marked off. This is the tailpiece and where this comes up to and ends up where I still got room to put something for the 12th fret. So these templates pay off and I did an episode called templates and I'm giving you a link up there. You're going to want to see that one. But let's take a look at this because this gets a little complicated. All right, the neck is going to go through. So I'm going to have to cut down a little bit here. And this is going to come off and be cut down a little bit there. Now, if I put three lay layers deep here, so I have another piece like this. And then I have the heel board that goes under here. That leaves me very little there. So what I do is I notch the heel board out like this to accept that there like so. You see how that fits in. I hope you can see that. So once I start cutting this out then I have to figure out okay that's going to be the end of the box. I've already routed this out. That stops right there and I want the license plate not to end at the edge of the box up there but I want it to be in a little bit like I hope you can see that there so all this stuff has to line up. So I've made a series of marks here. So my fretboard, there's the mark there where the nut's going to go. I have to cut this down. So I'm going to mark this off and run that through the bandsaw and get that close. Then I've got this three foot piece of wood and I've got the center of it marked off. And what do you know? I've got a mark there. See that's for that because this right here is let's flip that over see that right there so this is as wide as the heel board now I just take a square and mark that down and I've got a, a template that tells me how deep I have to cut that and I can blow these out all day long so this is going to have to be under there to about there like so you see that and then I have one more board that I am going to put and it matches the shape of this so I can use this as a model or as a template and mark that up by lining that up but then I'm going to line that edge up and I'm going to cut this and I'm going to carefully sand all of this stuff by clamping it together just like it was glued because I'm not going to glue this together and try and paint it. So what I'm going to do is sand all of the stuff with by clamping it. I'm going to have to move a couple clamps here and there again once I get this cut down on the belts or the, the band saw. I will put all these together with clamp, grind one side, sand it down, get everything nice and smooth. And then I'll take them apart and I don't want to get glue on my mating surfaces. I'm even going to have to take off the fingerboard and I'll take this blue tape and run it down the side again once it's cut to width. Sand everything down, get painters tape on the sides I don't want done and then I'm going to paint the bottom board this gray color and then I'm going to paint the middle board this color and the neck will be back to this color and then the side of the fingerboard will be this color. So you'll have the Greyhound theme of this running, alternating on the neck and there will be all kinds of goodies there. So I'm going to get all this set up. Um, it's a lot of hassle but it'll turn out nice and you get those nice crisp paint lines like this instead of trying to touch it up later. So um, I'm going to get to work on this thing. And I will show you what it looks like at the end. But the lesson here is, think this out. There's a lot going on here. I have to figure out where my fingerboard is going to be. 
I have to take and measure the scale where the license plate is going to end up on the neck. I mean, this is kind of a mess the way it looks right here. I've already got the mark where the bridge is going to be, but there's a lot to put together on this and measure out. So measure everything out ahead of time and then put it together uh, with clamps and make sure everything fits. So I will see you when this is done and we'll run through it. Partners, you need to watch your steps there. Yeah, welcome aboard my bus. Hey, when I told you I was building the Greyhound bus themed guitar, did you really think that I would not actually be sitting in the seat of a Greyhound bus, a real Greyhound bus? Did you? Really? You have little faith. This is a reason for you to give me a like below on your way down to the comments and all the fancy links. But I want to give a shout out to my friend Johnny Aiken who has graciously allowed me to use his Greyhound bus to film this episode. The things I will not do for you. Now, let's take a little tour. Remember. I was born in the back seat of a Greyhound bus rolling down Highway 41. You know where we're going next, right? Let's hit, this sounds rude, the back seat, baby. All right, you are not going to believe this. They must have known I was coming. There is actually a bed where the back seat used to be. Can you believe that? This seems kind of ironic to me. It's like there's a bed where the back seat of the Greyhound bus used to be and that's where someone was born in the back seat of a Greyhound bus somehow I think there's a tie-in with a bed and being born in the back seat of a Greyhound bus I don't really think and I wouldn't stake my reputation that this is the same bed but isn't that ironic now let me get this set up here <laughs> tell you what the acoustics in a Greyhound bus partially cover for my gross inadequacy as a guitar player what's that hey quiet on the set oh, oh sorry yeah I've just been reminded by the set director that I need to have my social distancing stuff in place so notice I have the autographed chick flick teal social distancing scrapparatus and I want to introduce the set director I believe you all know her, Mrs. Olson, and she is also practicing proper social distancing technique, at least while the camera is still on. That was for you, Mrs. Olson. Now, let's have a closer look at the nuances of this fine musical instrument. All right, first things first, we used the Chick Flick Teal official pointer of this channel to help us here. So we have John Sawyer license plate guitar kit body. We have a Mississippi bus. Most buses have public service commission that type of stuff on them but this is a Mississippi license plate from a bus from 1972 as you can see right there. Um, it has a humbucker, a flat humbucker, and one jack. I didn't put a piezo on this. Um, we used our tail piece with the tension pins and the copper tape. You can see it peeking out, out there. And with a volume control. And we've got the typical floating bridge that I always use. I put signature grease zork in case your plan gets rusty and box corners accessorized to the task at hand. Notice that he's doing the Vanna White move. Yeah, that's very talented. Now we get up to the matchbooks. Of course, they're Greyhound. This one goes back to the 
New York World's Fair. Look that up on Google. I like to promote edumacation. And we've got some Greyhound bus matchbooks. And you'll notice that some of these have that scenic cruiser on it, which is what this is. If you look right up there, yeah, you could look out and see a small minutia of the world's great outdoors. If you happen to be sitting in one of the seats and the person ahead of you did not have a huge cowboy hat on or something. And now we're moving up and there we go. Look, it's Lay's Cafe. Oh, yeah. Uh, we got a bone knot. We got some chick flick teal combined with some. Eli Green, hoodoo, hoodoo, you see me sliding that up and down. We got four black tuners. We got a map of Mississippi, and we got Highway 41. And what do you know? There is a Greyhound emblem that come off of somebody's uniform. So that's kind of what's here. Of course, the colors are Greyhound gray and Greyhound blue. We're as close as I could get them to what they had available in the hardware store in nonstop action, Acton cultural capital of the world. Now let's flip this puppy around and see what we did on the back. All right, we have an advertisement uh, from Greyhound here. Again, you got that scenic cruiser. What, you see that window right there? Yeah, there it is again. One more time in case you missed it the first time. I'm not sure what's out there, but I, it gives me the idea that there's something out there besides what the smell in this bus would have been back then and now uh, we got the heel board sticking out we got a bolt who knows where that bolt come from look at that that is a button now we usually put that where your finger or thumb is going to slip down in so you know you're at the 12th fret that wee thing and we got a button from a greyhound bus driver uniform um, I found it on the street. I didn't buy it. I think that somebody had a large stomach and one donut too many popped this one off and then I was fortunate enough to find it. We come up with this custom how to tie a strap on your guitar thing there. Uh, again, four black tuners and the most important part of these guitars is Tammy's signature right there. <laughs> All right, guys, I think that was pretty cool. Remember, if you see something hanging on the wall behind me in the shed, chances are that guitar might be for sale. So look for this one and get your money out. Little housekeeping, don't forget to give me a like below uh, and uh, subscribe. And oh yeah, I had some viewer input that the lighting on the set today seems to be a little bit dark. Well. I got the answer for you. I consulted with the Shell Answer Man, and he said that you need to turn on your light at home. With that, how can you beat this episode? Really, I expect a lot of views, a lot of likes, and a lot of, well, just a lot of. One more time, Johnny Aiken, you're the best, brother. Love this bus. I might have to buy it. You know how big a guitar that would be? What scale would the, would a full-length Greyhound bus guitar look be? And, and what would it look like going down the highway with a neck sticking out that's equidistant to give you the perpendicular um, equivalent of a 25 and a half scale. I know I'm being vaguely unclear here, but hey, it's my channel. Again, I'll see you next time.